today I'm here to tell you a story about two different TBT shops. So, you know, in some ways they were like, in some ways they were different. And we're going to go through how those things were different and specifically how the different things that happened changed how much money um, has been made in these two TBT shops. So yeah, let's get into it. If you're new around here, hi, I'm Becca. I'm an elementary music teacher and I own a shop called Becca's Music Room, which I started in September of 2018. The, the longer this goes, the older that makes me feel. Um, and so I started my shop in September of 2018 and have been absolutely obsessed with the business and growing the community and creating content and everything ever since. But I also always had in the back of my mind that, well, if you haven't noticed, I have a lot of, I have a lot of things that I'm interested in and a lot of things I'm passionate about. And one of those things you may or may not know is actually teaching about the Bible to my kids at children's church. I was in children's church when I was a kid and the week that I became too old to attend, the teacher announced, old Miss Gladys, old Miss Gladys, she announced that I was going to be the newest helper. And I basically was the helper for ever and sometime in high school I started actually teaching instead of just helping and by the time I started college they asked me if I would just take over and be in charge which looking back makes me feel a little bit like holy cow I can't believe that happened um and now it's been 10 years since actually almost 11 years now it's great Great. Anyway, so I have all these lessons that I have used for my Bible class even before I became a music teacher. And so when I started my blog, which I started my blog in 2017, I started my blog and I really didn't know what I wanted to talk about because I just had so many things that I wanted to talk about, which is still my problem. Um, but um, back then I would have everything on my blog. So I would have Bible lessons and I would have music lessons and I would have um, book reviews, like all these different things that really didn't mix well until I finally decided, okay, let's just talk about music over there because that makes sense because it's Becca's music room. So why are we talking about other things? It's confusing. Um, and so I stopped that. This was especially important when I became a TBT seller and I sold purely just music stuff. Um, however, in 2020, I, you know, as many of us did, had some extra free time on my hands. And so I had always in the back of my mind, but like, I would love to share all these lessons that I'm doing at church because, you know, we're doing all these things and I've been doing this for so long that I have all these things that we've been doing. And so I wanted to share. And so I decided to start a second TBT shop, which is both a great idea and also a terrible idea, which we'll talk about in a bit. Um, and so I started a second TBT shop. And with that, I started a new blog. I actually do have a YouTube channel for that one, although I've posted like maybe five videos ever. Um, so you don't need to go looking for it. Like it's not that great. Well, actually I'm pretty proud of the videos that I did make, but I don't have that many. And that was another reason I did this was because I was making videos and I was making principal activities for the kids to do at home for church because we weren't meeting. So anyway, now I have two TBT shops, like a crazy person. And I have learned a lot through the experience of having both of them. I don't regret either of them, but I do wanna talk through kind of like how things are when you treat your business like business, which is what I do with Becca's Music Room, and when you treat your business like a hobby, which is what I do with Becca's Bible class. So let's chat. First of all, as I said, yes, in 2020, I had a little extra time on my hands. Um, and then 2020 ended and I no longer had extra time on my hands. And it became very overwhelming to try to create products for two platforms and to try to write blog posts for two platforms and to do all these different things for basically double. So pretty much since its inception, I have treated Becca's Bible class more like a hobby. And we'll get into what that means in a little bit, but it's always been a hobby for me. So I haven't taken it as seriously. I have not worked nearly as hard. Becca's Music Room, y'all, I'm putting in hours and hours and hours and hours a week. Um, Becca's Bible Class, I don't think I have posted a resource in a year and a half. Like it's, it's been like that. But I wanted to talk about this so that you can kind of see in real time 
how having different priorities and treating your business differently can make a huge difference financially and in your success and all that good stuff. So I thought a good place to start with would be the numbers because you know, I, I love to share, I love to share the numbers. Um, and so I want to go through my like comparing year to year like my first year of both my second year to both and so on and so forth so you have kind of a context for what's going on and then we'll talk about kind of how you can make sure that your business falls in one place or the other depending on what you're willing to do want to do all that good stuff so let's get started um i started by becca's music room in september of 2018 so my first month i made seven dollars my second month i made seven dollars and then my third month i made like forty dollars and then i made like a hundred something and i ended up ending that year at 189 dollars which i was pretty excited about now becca's bible class i started actually in i don't know maybe april that sounds right um so like may march april somewhere in that so i had a lot longer of the year to get started with and in that first year i made 587 dollars and 68 cents which I feel like is pretty good for my first year. So I made more, but also it was more time that it was possible to make more money in. Would you would you like to come up? Would that make you happy? Yes, she did want to hop that answer. Oh, hi. So then on the second year of Becca's Bible class, when I was still doing a good bit of work and adding products and I was writing blog posts, they weren't coming out nearly as much as my music room ones were but i was writing them and in my second year in 2021 i made two thousand one hundred and twenty nine dollars and twenty nine cents on becca's bible class which is great um that is compared to on becca's music room my second year or my first full year in business i suppose i made seven thousand dollars eight hundred and eighteen cents year three in my bible class is when i really started to honestly spend less time on it because I got to the point where I was like, yeah, I need to be spending more time on the music stuff. I was back in the classroom in 2022 and instead of sitting at my house, not doing anything, not, not, I was working. I was working really, really hard during the school day, but I didn't have any like after school activities. I wasn't doing choir. I wasn't doing, you know, we weren't going to church, like all that kind of stuff during that time. So that's where I had that extra time was the lack of other things. So in my third year of Becca's Bible class, I made $3,029.31. So yeah, about 900 more than the year before. So that's a pretty good amount of growth. However, if you compare that to my third year of TBT on Becca's Music Room, I made $21,000, $21,459 um, in my third year over there. Okay. Okay. Then in my fourth full year, which was last year, 2023, I made $3,706.05, so in 700 more than the previous year. Whereas on TBT in Becca's, Becca's Music Room, my fourth year, I made $58,322. So as you can see from those numbers, they have drastically, drastically, drastically been different. However, I do want to just, you know, input that there are a couple of differences. First of all, um, the main thing is that I had totally different niches because, you know, music versus Bible, those are not the same thing. So that could potentially have something to do with it. Maybe there aren't too many Bible teachers shopping on TBT. I don't know. Um, I also had had my blog for a year before I started my TBT shop for Becca's Music Room. So I already had an email list. I already had blog posts. And so those kind of things helped me to generate a little bit more traffic earlier versus I didn't have those things with Becca's Bible class. I actually started my blog and my tbt at the same time over there which i liked because then i was able to promote those products that i was making but i didn't have that like year that i had been building things up so that's another thing to take into account but if we're honest the main 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 difference between the two different shops the one that's making you know fifty eight thousand after four years and the one that's making 3700 after four years is the amount of effort and how I have treated them. So Becca's Bible class has always been treated like a hobby. It was one I made 
second it's it's not even a hobby it's a hobby to my hobby because I already have hobbies and so it was created because I was making things I was like I have extra time I'm making these things I might as well post them and make some money also you know right when COVID hit my other shop did take a nasty dive um so i was looking for additional ways to make money so that also helped but i have always treated it like a side hustle so what i mean by that is i don't allocate a lot of time to it i'm not consistent with it i definitely don't put up as many products i don't even have 200 in there versus i have like 900 right now in my music room like can i even get to a thousand does it cut off at some point i don't know um and so I have definitely done things differently in there because I had to, because I was already working a full-time job and treating my Becca's Visa Groom business like a full-time job. Like I pretty much work two full-time jobs. I mean, not in hours, but in, in effort, I feel like, because I work so hard so hard on Becca's music room. I am constantly writing blogs, creating videos. I am on Instagram, posting things, answering people, talking to people. I am creating new products. I'm posting new products. I'm updating products. Like I am working. I am down in the trenches, working in there all the time, all the time. This year I've actually stepped back a tiny bit, but especially in years past, like at, yeah, it was, it was a lot. It was a lot. And I have done a lot for a long time. And so because I did that and I treated it very much like a business from the get go, even when I was just blogging and I was making like $10 a month, I would still take the money and I would split it up. Like this is for taxes, you know, this $2 is for taxes. Um, and you know, I would do all of those things, keep the money separate. I was, you know, really trying to make the money from the beginning and really treating it like a business from the beginning. And that has shown. So first of all, just how you look at your business, your shop is going to determine part of what's going to happen. If you're treating it like a side hustle, it's an afterthought. It's something you do when you have time, which might not be for a couple months, then it's not going to be the same as if you're treating it like this is a business. This is important. This is my livelihood. This is what I do with my life because that's pretty much how I spend my life is working on the music stuff and helping music teachers like that is my goal is to help music teachers because y'all they need so much help not because they're not good because most of them are great but because they're just not prepared and it's so hard to get help and like we don't have access to the same kind of training like i could go on and on and on about why it is so important to me to help those music teachers we're not going to get into it right now but what i will say is that that is something that has captured my heart and that i have worked so 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 hard on and that treating them differently has manifested different amounts of money the other thing about, well, I guess it all kind of goes into treating it differently, but really the biggest difference when it comes to treating them differently is two things, and that is time and effort. So first of all, let's talk time. Um, your time is very limited, and so you don't have a lot of time to allocate. We all, we all only have 24 hours a day, and if you're working full time, then that's already, you know, eight, 10, 11 hours that you're taking out and at some point you have to eat and you have to sleep and you have to do those things and if you have other obligations like church like musicals like choir like children like husbands or wives or whatever those things all take time and then the whole like you do need to rest at some point so you don't lose your mind because i've come very close to it um also very important and so those things you know they fill up your time and there's only so much that you have left. So with Becca's Music Room, I have always prioritized it. I look at my week every single week and I say, when can I make this product? When can I write this blog post? When can I make this video? Like I'm filming this video right now. I mean, this isn't for Becca's Music Room, but I just filmed two videos for Becca's Music Room. I filmed them first because that's the priority. And I made sure that I had a day this week where I could film so that I was able to keep those businesses going. And I have treated it like that from the beginning. Like I am going to write the blog post. I'm going to make those videos. I'm going to get everything out so that it can be the best that it can be. And I have allocated as much time as I possibly have been able to. In Becca's Bible class, I have not done that because it's a side hustle. And so I have not 
shaped my whole weeks around when I can do that. And a lot of times this is the biggest thing to me. Um, this may not be applicable to you because you probably don't have two shops and I don't actually recommend it. But, um, there's been many times that I have been planning like, Oh, this week I'm going to work on, you know, Bible stuff and I won't finish my music stuff and I'll scoot that to the side. And instead I'll work on my music stuff because it's more important to me because it's a business because it's more important. I mean, that's, that's just, that's the end, the end result. And that might change one day, maybe one day I'm gonna pivot and I'm gonna, you know, totally treat them differently. But right now at least, like that's kind of where I'm at. So when you're looking at your week and you're allocating time, if you wanna treat your business like a business, allocate that time first. Figure out consistent days that you can work on your business because that has been the biggest thing. When I talk to people who are successful, it's because they have, oh, these are the days that I work. When I talk to people who are not successful, it's like, oh, well, I just couldn't find time. And that's how I feel about the other, the other, the side hustle. Oh, I just didn't have time. Oops. I don't say that about the business, about the business. I'm like, no, I will have time. Like I will find it. I will make it. I will make it happen because it's gotta get done. Okay. Okay. So first of all, if you want to treat your business like a business and you want to have actual business results and you know, now I'm making six figures over there schedule time time is the biggest thing the second biggest thing is going to be the effort and so even though these are kind of the same thing um your effort is basically to me like your level of intensity so if you're very like willy-nilly like oh i might do it oh i might not do it or you're not too concerned with how much you're gonna get done that's not a lot of effort if you're like i'm gonna sit here and i'm gonna get this stuff done that's effort and we all know what that feels like because you have had times where you had a lot of effort and times where you have not had a lot of effort. You probably have products that you put a lot of effort into and products you haven't put a lot of effort into. And so those things that you are putting more effort into are going to have better results. I spent a lot more hours working on my music lessons, which is, you know, partially just the nature of what they are because I'm, you know, making videos and I'm writing sheet music and I'm at, like, I'm adding all these extra things that I maybe don't need in my Bible lessons. Um, but all those things are effort and that effort is what's going to get you the extra money. So if you're looking to level up your business and you're looking to do better then you need, need, need to make sure that you're putting in that level of effort even when it's hard, even when it's difficult, even when you don't want to. So have the time, but also put in the effort of actually working when you say you're going to, actually accomplishing what you want to accomplish when you're doing it, okay? okay. And last one, but maybe even the most important is the consistency. This has been the telltale sign. on uh, The tell, the, t the telltale sign? Telltale sign, right? Like the telltale heart? Ed Graham Poe? right? I think that's right. Consistency has been the most important thing that I will say in my business, like for years, for years, I've been telling you the most important thing is the consistency because you don't build a business by doing what I've done with Becca's Bible class, which is like, Oh, here's a product. There's a product. I may or may not be posting blog posts this year. We'll find out. Here's a random video. Here's another video. I've been trying to be a little better on Instagram. I definitely go through them for quite a while and then I was like, oh no, we need to do that. So I'm trying, I'm trying to do two or three times a week. I'm working on it. Um, but that's how I've treated it. And that's treating it like a side hustle because it's not consistent. And it, there's, you're not gonna get those six figure business like results with inconsistent actions. If you want consistent results, you're gonna have to put in that consistent action. So what I mean by that is having designated work times, making sure that you get the most important things done. Like I'm gonna send those emails every week. Those blogs are gonna go out every other week. Like I have, I have those things that are the most important. I make sure that I'm posting new products. I make sure I'm updating products. Like I make sure I'm doing all these things and I do them on a consistent basis because if you can be consistent and you can keep going, then even if, you know, this product's not a superstar and this product's not a superstar and that product's not a superstar, one of them's going to be, you just haven't hit it yet. Or maybe none of them are like rock star, super stand out, but 
many of them make you some money and combined they make you a good bit there's lots of different ways you can make money but the point is that if you are not consistent and you're not consistent in your actions and your efforts then you will not get consistent results either so you can be consistent and put some time in and put some effort in and have a business or you can be inconsistent not put the time in not put the effort in and have a hobby now that being said i do want to give a little caveat to this because i also really like to see the growth of the side hustle and here's why i in 2020 i did spend quite a bit of time making products for Bex bible class i told you i like i have a blog and i have a youtube channel um and in 2021 i also did 2022 i kind of pulled back a little bit because i was just kind of like let's make sure i'm putting my effort where it's worth and so i still did a little bit but not a ton in 2023 <laughs> I really didn't do anything. If we're honest, the only things that I did in 2023 was I sent emails, not very consistently, sorry. I posted on Instagram, not very consistently, sorry. That's literally all. I did not post a product in 2023. I did not write a blog post. I did not make a video. I didn't do any of those things, but even without doing those things, I was still able to one get people on my email list can i just say people have been coming to my email list because i had all those lead magnets in my blog posts that i made in previous years not even this year so i was still getting more people on my email list which means that each email is reaching more people so i'm putting in the same amount of effort but i'm getting more out so i got more people on my email list and i also got people who were purchasing my products i still had growth year over year even though i really wasn't doing anything now i had more growth in the beginning when i was putting that extra effort in and i was working harder but it's also really important to note that the money still came in even without me putting effort in and that's the definition of a passive income. And the reason I wanted to highlight that is because I know some of you, well, most of you here are like, yeah, let's build a business, let's do all the things because that's why you find me because that's what I'm all about. But I know some of you are not about that. And some of you are like, I don't have a lot of time and I can't treat this like a business and I don't wanna quit teaching or I just wanna make a couple extra dollars. And so for those people, I wanted to share this kind of as a little bit of hope and inspiration of if you can put in some effort, especially at the beginning, like I did, I put a lot of products up, I put some blog posts up. If you can put that effort up in the beginning, then it will continue to make you money. Not at the rate that you maybe want it to, not super quickly, but it will continue and that will help you to have that passive income that's truly passive down the road. It's never always passive, but it can be passive. So whether you're in the boat of, oh, I just want to make a little bit of money or, yes, it's nice to meet you too, or you want to build a whole business and, you know, do the whole thing, you can do either one. Just remember that your attitude, your time your effort and your consistency is going to determine your outcome so the problem lies in where you want the business money but you're not willing to put in the business effort you're putting in the side hustle effort and wanting the business money and that's not how this works if you want to have that really good income input then you need to do the outputs that will create that so you need to have consistent effort you need to post products you need to have traffic you need to have an email list you need to like you need all those things if you really want to be successful long term you don't need them all right away but if that's your goal that's what you should be working towards if you're doing a side hustle though yeah post some products i already made this might as well post it actually i made something the other day for my kiddos and i was like oh i need to go post this because i already made it for my kids so i might as well put it up you know little random bible lesson haven't posted one in a year and a half but here's something that we were doing this week so i might as well post it because i already made it so that's kind of the side hustle mentality versus the business mentality of oh let me find some data backed product ideas and create them and make sure they're really you know all those things a lot of my bubble lessons are really fun and exciting. I have like a science lesson and uh, object lessons and like all of these different things, but you know, it's just, it's just not the same. So there's a little inspiration. My whole point of all of this is I want you to make sure that you are going after the business you want 
and then taking the actions to make that business happen. Because if this is what you want, this is not gonna get you there. So you have to make sure that you have the right mentality and you're doing the actions that back up that mentality in order to get the results that you want. If you have questions about anything specific, go send me a message on Instagram. It's at becca.e.davis. I would love to make maybe like a follow-up video where we could talk more deeply about one or more of these issues, things. If you're thinking about maybe doing a second shop and you're not sure, we could do a video about that. Although, spoiler, I'll probably tell you no, but <laughs> we can talk through, you know, when it might be a good idea, when it might not be a good idea and all of those things. So thank you for watching and I look forward to hearing you over on my Instagram DMs. You can also leave a comment, but I'm really bad.